and use my voice. Um, <laughs> thank you. It doesn't need to be recorded. Um, anyway, so no Nigel today, but we have found Paul King. Alrighty, let's make a start. Is everybody having a good snooze after lunch? Yeah. We're in a nice. <laughs> On the scale of like energized and snoozy, where would you, where would you put yourselves now? <laughs> Energy. Yeah. What did you have? Pear sugar. Oh, pear sugar. Right. Okay. Well, I think this talk, what was the title of this talk? I've forgotten it. Is it something about a new hope or something? Is it on the... Yeah. What does it say? Replication war with new hope. I ask you all, scale wars, a new hope, and replication strikes back. Yes, so... <laughs> so I had actually planned to have two talks and, um, you know, borrow from the Star Wars names a little bit there, but the OSDC team decided that I should squish them down into one talk, so we've changed the format a little bit. Does it say, in, I think it says in the abstract that I'm going to demonstrate. So I looked up demonstrate in the dictionary and it, and it, and it says um, talk about it with a couple of slides. That's what demonstrate means. So that's what I'm going to do. Am I going to get this thing working? Magic clicker. Right, so uh, I'm talking about MariaDB today, which is a fork off MySQL and, uh, in fact, MariaDB 10.0 I'm talking about. Um, I use the words MariaDB and MySQL interchangeably. Um, and we're talking about scaling. So for scaling, we're talking about using more than one server at a time. Um, that might be because we've got lots of load, lots of clients accessing it. Um, or it might be because we're trying to get high availability. Uh, we want some servers to keep going when one of them breaks down. Or it might be for backup. Don't get me started on backup. Anyway, we're trying to run more than one MariaDB server at the time. And the old-fashioned way of doing that... Um, do you like those pictures? I, got, I, just, I was just playing with the pretty toys. Um, we'd have uh, what we call MySQL replication or asynchronous replication. I call it classic replication now. So the... Uh, applications will send their write um, queries, update queries to the master, and then the slave will replicate from the master just by copying its binary log and applying it to the slave. Then the, the application can do its read requests from the slave. Not much point when you do it like that. This isn't really working for me. Oh, yeah, all right, fancy. Uh, when we do it with a few slaves, though, we're starting to get scaling. So. There I've got three slaves running and it kind of works because applications are mainly read intensive. They do more reads than they do writes. So that gets the scaling stuff up. Especially websites tend to be more reads than writes. There's a good generalisation. If your application is not more reads than writes, that's not going to work. This one has two masters. So we're using the top master. The bottom master is just replicating as well. Uh, just so it's going to be the standby for when uh, the first master breaks down. Now that's all kind of fine, but a bit scary. There's a few problems with that. Let's see if we can work out what they are. Right, these are the problems. The slave lag means that the poor old slaves there have to update their database, you know, um, some milliseconds or microseconds or minutes or whatever it is after the master has done it. So the application will be reading older data. It can sometimes 
write some data and then try to read it back and still get the old data and it might get confused. So there's a problem. Um, problem is you need to change the application so it sends its writes over there and its reads over there. So you need to get into the code of your application. That's very difficult if you're not controlling the code, of course. Um, you still need an issue about how to load balance between the slaves. So applications will need to um, you know, channel things out. You can use, there's a number of techniques for that, load balances and so on. Um, it still doesn't give us an opportunity to scale writes because we're always writing to one server. Um, one of the interesting things there is people think that the, the master is taking the write load and the slaves don't have to do that, but in fact the slaves are doing the writes as well. The writes have to go to the master, the slaves are doing all the writes plus all the reads, so the slaves are actually working harder than the masters in these kind of configurations. Um, when there's been um, a server go down and come back online, there's some effort to resynchronize that slave to the master. Um, and if you're going to switch to another master, there's some effort to repoint the slaves to the new master. So there's all kinds of problems. And this is what we've been working with for a few years, and we've, we're managing to get along with these things and, and work around them. However, now we have a new hope. Uh, I think called Galera has come along. Do we like the pronunciation Galera or Galera? Who likes Galera? Galera, I've got about half a Galera. Who likes Galera? No, I don't have many for Galera. So we like Galera today. All right. It only has like one L. Does anybody know where the name came from? Dan knows where the name came from. All right. So um, this, is, this is the all singing, all dancing. Um, new thing that will fix up all of these problems. So we have many masters, all of them active, all of them peers. Um, it's synchronous, there's no slave lag. Is this a thing? Uh, not very much. Not very much slave lag. There's no integrity issues. Or not many issues. And uh, automatic node provisioning. That means that if you want to add a new node to the cluster, you just sort of plug it on and it automatically gets all the data off one of the existing nodes and brings itself, gets itself into synchronization. Um, cross data center and intercontinental replication. Um, for some reason, they reckon that with Galera, you can have uh, servers in other data centers, whereas with the old thing, you had to have it all in the same local area network. Um, I guess that depends on your load balancing strategy. And write scaling, yes! Now we can write to any server, and if you've got six servers, therefore you can write six times as much. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a picture. You can see that the applications are using any server. Uh, they just read and write from the same server. They can use two servers if they want. And all the servers talk to all the other servers. And um, I've put heaps and heaps of servers in that picture. I've put six of them in there. So that's good. Multicast. Multicast. Do you like multicast, Dan? Yeah. What's happened there? There's supposed to be a picture there. I've lost my picture. All right. Um, interpretive dance. Interpretive dance, okay. So, the um, row by agonizing row. <laughs> the row by row. The um, gallery comes from the which language is that? Help me out, Dan. Which language was that? Uh, Norse or something. Norse language, which means galley ship. So one of those old-fashioned ships. Um, before they invented sailing, they had to have lots of people rowing the ship. Um, and I guess. The implication, why they've used that image for this software is because it's really old-fashioned software, which was, is it, no, maybe it's because... It was keeping the, the rows actually in sync. Keeping the rows in sync, or all of the, all of the workers working in unison to achieve a good result. Yeah. It's actually, um, the, the way it works, I'm not really going to go into how it works, but it was invented a few years ago and only implemented recently. Uh, so, it's easier. I want to say that again. 
Galera is easier to do the administration. I think that's a key benefit of Galera, easier. You don't have to split the reads and writes, so you don't have to change your application code. Um, failover is easy. There's nothing for us to do when something breaks. One of the nodes breaks. Um, the clients just have to pick another node and everything just keeps going. And even when that one comes back online, it'll automatically resynchronize. So there's no effort. It's easy failover. Can I say that word again? Easy. Um, the slave leg is only very tiny. Um, there's even controls within Galera so that you can limit how big that gets um, by slowing all the masters down when somebody starts getting a little bit behind. And write scaling, it's still on the website, it still says write scaling, so it's on the chart. And cheating on the F-Syncs, I don't know. Usually when we set up a database for asset compliance, we want to uh, do an F-Sync after every commit. Um, but in the Galera manual it says you don't have to do that because hey, it's being committed on the other server as well. So it doesn't matter if it's not on this server, so they turn off all the F-Syncs, which... Pardon? Once you get a citywide power outage. A citywide power outage. <laughs> A global parody. Intergalactic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, you could cheat on the F-Syncs and that might give you some faster performance. Consider it as an option. An option. All right, so how did we go? Did we um, fix any problems? So the, the slave lag is kind of fixed. Well, pretty much. Pretty much fixed. The need to change application to put reads and writes is is fixed, that's been done. The load balancing, uh, we haven't really addressed how we're going to achieve that. And now we need to have an argument about right scaling. So, anybody like to open the discussion on right scaling? So every master has to write correct? Every change? Every master writes every change. Could somebody call Arjen back in please? <laughs> Just check that's not a permanent marker. White board marker. He brought that pen in himself. He didn't pick it up here. He brought it in and he took it out. Yes. So it's, his, it's his message to eternity. Yes. Oh, sorry, that wasn't Ian. That was um, Jacinta. Jacinta. All right. All right. Um, I don't need to draw a picture. When we had only one server, all the rights had to go to that. We're trying to get all the servers up to date, so the rights have to go to all the servers. So it must be the same amount of disk I/O, disk writing to all the servers. Um, so if the original server was disk I/O bound on its rights, then they're all going to be disk I/O bound. You haven't improved anything. Um, but I'm sure these guys can come up with some use cases where they do get right scaling. I haven't managed to prove it yet, but I think if they do some sort of write statement that's says um, update row, set total equals, select sum from all these other rows, then, yes. yeah, so it's a complicated uh, select query that results in a little piece of writing. Then only that updated row is going to go through the replication. So that will make it easier for all the other ones to do their, their updates. So that's, that's the use case where you could get right scaling. Um, there's some effort to, uh, to, re to resync after a slave maintenance. Uh, well, that's fixed. What did that say? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's fixed. But while it's uh, resyncing, it takes out another node. So <laughs> you need to have a few extra nodes around for that to work. Um, and so the way, the way that it will resynchronize after a failure is it'll pick another node that's still running, the donor node, and it will say, give me the updates that I've missed. But if it's missed too many updates, uh, then it won't be able to get those updates. So we'll start again from scratch and it'll say to that donor node, okay, take yourself offline, give me a whole rsync and we'll go from there. So um, it works, it's easy, but just be aware of what it's doing. Um, and it will take another server offline for a bit. 
Uh, effort required to repoint the slaves when the master is changed, that's fixed. There's no effort required at all. As soon as one uh, server goes down, um, the Galera system recognises that that one's out. Galera thing. Like it sort of fixed all the problems, but it's introduced a new, new set of problems. Maybe not as bad, but let's have a look. Um, so the application may need to be aware of those. In particular, there's you might get more deadlocks. You can get deadlocks on commits, which never used to happen. So if uh, your you application needs to be able to handle that. Um, it could be a generic handling. That is, if there's any error, then start the connection again from scratch. You don't have to do anything particularly fancy, but you do need to do something. Um, it can still be a tiny bit of slave lag. It's probably not going to worry you now because one server is, uh, one client is just accessing the one server. It'll do its writes there, it'll do its reads, it'll be able to read back what it just wrote. So that's not really a problem unless you've got some particular application where a different client wrote to a different slave and, that, and that's an issue to you, which one got there first. You have to get pretty specific to find out where that's a problem. Um, there's an extra latency in commits. Um, when, we, when the application sends its update statement in, that has to go around to all the other servers. And then when you do a commit, it basically takes a ping time to the longest ping time of any server extra in that commits. So if you're in the one data center, you know, it's one millisecond extra per commit. If you're going across data centers, 10, 20 milliseconds, whatever it is. If you're going around the world, 150 milliseconds extra. Um, that's not much for one commit, but if you have an application which is doing many commits for one user, in a, one user transaction, then you've got some response time issue there. Throughput is reduced by 8.73%. Anybody know where I got that figure from? A specific test case? <laughs> yeah, I just pulled that one out. That's right. Um, there's a little bit of throughput reduction because there's a bit more work for it to do. It does a bit more network stuff um, and a bit more CPU stuff, so it just reduces the throughput a little bit as well as the response time. Uh, and you need at least three servers and maybe four. So what's going on with that is um, if we have two servers running and they're talking to each other and this link was broken, then each server says, well, how am, am I now the, the master server or am I the one that was broken off? And uh, it says, what we used to have was two servers running. Now we've got one server running. That's what this one's thinking about. And it says, well, one is not bigger than half of what we had before. So it says, well, I'm not the quorum. I'm not more than half of what we had before. And this one also says, I'm not more than half of what we had before. So that's not going to work. What you need is three servers. And then if one of the servers fails, these guys are still talking to each other. So this one can say, look, there's two servers still in our component. Two is more than half of the three that we had before. Therefore, this is now the primary component and we'll continue serving. This guy says, well, look, I'm just running by myself. I can't speak to either of my friends. So there's now one server in this component. One is less than half of the previous three. So that one will... Um, refuse future requests. So that one will just stop working and complain. When the networks come back on, it'll join back in and catch up and everything will be fine. But you need to have at least three to do that. Anybody thinking about using it in two data centers? Yes? Okay. How many data centers was that? Two. Right. So let's say you had a nice cluster of three servers in that data center and a nice cluster of three servers in this data center. <laughs> and they're all talking to each other. You can do groups so there's only um, one connection between the two. But if the, if the links between those two data centers were cut, <coughs> then suddenly this server here is saying, well, look, there's three in this component. There used to be six. 
3 is not greater than half of 6. Therefore, this is not the primary component, so we're not continuing. And these servers up here say the same thing. So if you want to go multiple data centers, that multiple number is 3. 3 data centers. Okay? Um, that's a short story. Then uh, there's more argument and debate about little things you can do to fix that. But basically you need to be thinking about three if you're thinking about data centers. Um, well, some smart people will be saying, hey, that's easy. You just put two servers in this data center and one server in that data center. And then if you break the link, this one will continue on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this will give you some some protection, but it's not as good as having three separate data centers. Data centers are cheap now, anyway. I mean, you and me. Just make another one in the car. Yeah. Can you give me one of your spares? <laughs> you could um, make one of your data centers be uh, just a virtual machine somewhere, just keeping up with the updates, but not serving any read requests. Um, there's you know, a few few options you can do, um, which I'm not going to go into the details of. But the answer is you need at least three servers. That's a got you. The starting price is three. Um, it's really four because, as I said, when one comes out and then comes back in, it's going to put a heavy load on the other guys. Might take one offline even, so you might want to have four. Four is not a particularly good number. For well, do you want to have five? <laughs> I five. five? Okay, there's a limit to how many you can have. It's a performance limit, and that is about six. So uh, the number six I've also just made up on the spot. Well, we've looked at some performance graphs, and after you've added six servers, it just starts to slow down. There's just more intercommunication work going on, and you're not really getting much more benefit in terms of total transactions per second out of the whole thing. Um, your particular use case might be different to the sys bench that's been done on, um, but think of about six. So it's not scaling up to 100 servers, that's not what we're talking about here, we're scaling up to six, seven if you push it, around about that number. And the last gotcha is it's in ODB only. On Tuesday I talked about the TOCUDB, which is meant to be already 20 times faster than InnoDB. So if, uh, if, if you're going to use Galera, it's only InnoDB. All right, what's next? Classic replication fights back, yes. With um, version 10 of MariaDB, we've got some new classic replication features. We've got parallel updating, so that means running uh, multi-threaded updates on the slave. That wasn't the case in previous releases, but now it's a goer, which means that we don't really get the slave lag problems that we used to get. So we fixed slave lag with parallel replication. I talked more about that on Tuesday. Uh, the other thing we've got is global transaction IDs, and that helps with the repointing issue, where you're pointing your slaves from that master, then you have to repoint them to the other master. Again, I spoke about that on Tuesday. New feature in MariaDB 10, and that solves some of those problems. And we've now also got multi-source replication. So the old system, a master, no, rather, let me say slave, could only get its data from one master. It couldn't read it from another master. That was not a goer. So, you could daisy chain them, so that master could copy from there, and that master and that slave could copy from there. That was okay, but no, um, never could you have two. But now we can have two, so that solves some of our re, our repointing problems as well. So we can make an, a topology like this one. Now I've got six slaves and two masters, and all of the slaves are reading updates from both of the masters and the masters are reading updates from each other. If you're going to set up a topology like this, 
you're going to be probably, you still have to split your reads and writes. And I suggest you put all your writes to one of the masters and the other master is the backup master. Or grow your own topology, this isn't the only way you can do it. Um, but that thing will keep running without having to have the things repointed when something fails. Let's check our list. Any, any questions? All happy with that? Okay, so this new thing, did it fix the slave layer? Yes, we pretty much fixed that up with the parallel replication. Um, change the application to split reads and writes, we still have to do that. Load balancing between slaves, same issue. Cannot scale writes, same issue. Same effort required to resync a slave after maintenance. Well, that's been fixed. Um, when, with the new multi-source replication, we don't really have to do any of that repointing, resyncing stuff. Um, hang on. Resync isn't fixed. Resync isn't fixed. Repoint. The bottom one's fixed. Why isn't? Why did I write fixed for sync? I like the green. Um, Resyncing will be made a little bit easier because of the global transaction IDs. But yeah, I shouldn't shouldn't really count that one now. I'll just cross that one off. <coughs> and here's a bit of a summary. Galera is easy. There's a bit of a learning curve, so. Have a look in the instruction manual and um, get some of those $5 virtual servers and give it a good old test and a good old play with it before you put it in production. Test it particularly with your own application because your own application will have its peculiar peculiarities in terms of what it's doing. The multi-source and the parallel and the global transaction ID replication now is worth another look. Um, Maybe it can get bigger on the read scaling. Maybe you can have 100 servers if you go that way. Um, you're not scaling writes, but maybe you can scale the read bigger. So you might have a specific case where you want to go back to the multi-source thing. Um, it can probably go a little bit faster because it doesn't have the overheads of Galera. And it's not as hard as it used to be. So I think the bottom line is Galera is easy. Use Galera, it's good. But if you have some specific issues, maybe look at the other ones. I'm doing some workshops in February in Sydney. If you want to come along, we get to get our hands dirty and play with all that stuff. We'll crash nodes and bring them back up again and uh, all kinds of stuff. That'll be fun. And that's all I've got for today.